Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We fulfilled our pledge. A lecturer once told the following story. I was sitting in the bus, waiting for it to travel to a remote city in Iran during the ruling of the buried Shah. Nobody was sitting next to me yet, and I was really worried that an unpleasant person might sit next to me on such a long trip. I prayed from the bottom of my heart to Allah, My Lord, if it were destined that someone should sit next to me, please let him be a religious and nice person. The travelers sat on their seats, and no one yet occupied the seat next to me, and so I praised Allah for my solitude. But I was disappointed when, at the last moment before departure, a western-looking man who did not look like the religious part of the community approached until he sat next to me. Is this how you answer my prayer, my Lord? I thought in my heart. The bus moved, and neither of us said a word to the other. That is probably due to the fact that the media sources of the Western Bank Shah has portrayed us religious figures in a negative light to the public. I, therefore, elected to anxiously remain both patient and silent. When it reached the time for Salah, my traveling companion abruptly stood and requested from the driver, Stop here, it is time for Salah. The driver ironically responded while eyeing him through the mirror, Sit down, who can stop for Salah? Don't you see that we are in the desert? I said, Stop, or else I will jump out of the bus, and you will have my dead body to deal with. The man insisted. I could not fathom what I saw and heard from that man. It was an astounding situation. After all, being a religious figure, I was the one who was supposed to act this way. And the reason I did not ask for stopping for Salah was to avoid the people's hostile attitude that they harbor against religious figures. I, therefore, had put off Salah until we had reached the restaurant where we can take our break. And so I was looking at my traveling companion with utter astonishment, while the driver had to consent to the man's request upon the man's insistence and threat. The man dismounted from the bus, and I followed him. I saw him open the handbag, pull a water bottle out of it where he abluted, and offered it to me right after. Then he determined the direction of Qubla using a compass spread his praying mat, placed on it the sajda from the holy soil of Karbala, and began performing salah earnestly. I likewise began performing salah while still astonished. When we remounted the bus, I warmly greeted him while apologizing for having ignored him throughout the first part of the journey. And then I asked him, Who are you? My story is curiously interesting, he said. I used to know nothing about Islam, nor about Salah. I was an only child for my parents, who paid all they had in order that I finish my medicine school education in France. The school was so far from my residence, and one day I rode the bus that I usually take to school amongst other passengers. It was very cold, and I was heading to take the final exam, whose outcome will determine the fruits of all my efforts. Halfway through, however, the bus broke down. Going to the closest mechanic required so much time that I would miss my final exam. The driver sent someone to get help, and I, throughout those minutes, was absolutely devastated, unsure what to do, where to go, or whether to seek succor from the sky. I was wishing if I were never born, and if earth would split and swallow me. Those were the most difficult minutes of my life. Each one of those minutes seemed like an arrow stabbing my hopes and shattering them into pieces while I helplessly watched. Every time I looked at my watch, the moments were squeezing my heart, and I almost fell to the ground from my despair. Suddenly, I remembered that when my grandmother in Iran would face or hear about a great dilemma, she would call from the depth of her heart, O oh, Sahib Zaman. Due to my ignorance in religion back then, I did not know that Sahib Al-Zaman is a title of Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, 
However, even without me knowing whom is meant by the word, I recollected my dear family memories, and with all the passion in my heart, I called, Ya Sahib Zaman Jaddati, O Sahib Zaman of my grandmother. Since I did not know who Sahib Al Zaman was, I attributed him to my grandmother, and then I vowed, if you save me from this great dilemma, I promise you to learn how to perform salah and perform it as soon as it becomes due. Moments later, a majestically looking man showed up and said to the driver in French, turn on the vehicle. And it rode to life from the first attempt. Then he said to the driver, hurry up and drive these people to their destinations without delay. And upon leaving, he turned to me and addressed me in Persian. We have fulfilled our pledge. It is now your turn to fulfill your pledge too. I was stunned, and before waking up from the shock, he had disappeared. Since then, and to fulfill my pledge, I have learned Salah, and I perform it as it becomes due, always. Allahumma kulli waliyik, al ibn al-Hasan, صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين تمت بحمد الله